Lord, welcome out to Wednesday night of revival. Let's stand to our feet. Hallelujah. We're going to worship the Lord. Amen. We're going to sing before God puts our hands together. Amen. Praise God. Our God is greater. How many can say amen? Yes. Our God is greater. How many can say amen? Yes. Glory to God. Let's be excited tonight.
Praise the Lord. We are praying for a number of people. Marjean, my wife, her, her mom uh, is in desperate need of healing. She's uh, just uh, not doing well right now. And so we're believing God. Uh, some symptoms there are troubling. So we're believing God. Amen. A friend of her uh, is named Rocky. And her mother uh, needs a healing miracle. Uh, Cindy and John Gray need healing. And of course, Wendy, continued prayer for her. Amen. How many need prayer? Yes. How many believe in God for a miracle? Yes. Amen. 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 How many need uh, uh, just a prayer in life? Amen. Yes. Come on, somebody. And so we are believing God for finances, for marriages, for, for salvation, for help, for, for being able to sleep. Amen. For getting through uh, the day. Hallelujah. For winning your relatives to Jesus, your co-workers to Jesus. Amen. For bringing somebody, amen, into the house of God. For somebody to finally say yes and come amen. when you invite them. Amen. So we're believing God for all of that. We're praying for Pastor John Robinson as he finishes up. Uh, amen tonight. And we're believing God for a, a long lasting effect. This has been for me an amazing, amazing revival. I have hit that altar. I've loved his messages. I love the take he's had on all of them. The questions that God asks people. It's been an amazing thing. And I've had a great time. And I'm fired up and I'm ready to preach. Amen. On Sunday. Come on, somebody. I'm ready to preach tonight. But we, we can tag team if we have to. But I'm going to leave it to him. He's doing a great job. Better than I could do. And so we are thankful. Amen. For this revival. I am thankful for this revival. Let's come before the Lord in prayer. Let's believe God together. All of these things we're praying for. Amen. And Brother Alex uh, would come to this microphone and open us in prayer. Lift up your hands towards heaven and let's call upon the name of the Lord. We thank you and praise you and magnify your name, Lord. We need you, God, in this house. Lord, have right away dominion, God, Rama. God, speak to us. Lord, we thank you for all these members who brought my prayer to the God, we've been in the room this week, Lord. God, I told you we're from Pastor Robert and Tom, God, that we've been here tonight, God, Father God. God, you'll start to hear what we receive. In the precious and holy name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Take a moment. Turn to somebody next to you. Welcome them into the house of God. Greet somebody. Tell them, I'm glad you were in church tonight. You needed it. You needed it. Tell them, you needed it. blessed to have you tuning in. Uh, we have a decent crowd on live stream uh, every single service all, uh, uh, all month long. And so during revivals, I'll be anxious to see how many of you were there uh, even watching what's going on. Praise God. We'd like to hear from you. You can send us a note uh, through our website to the Facebook page there. Also, you can send a note. We do have uh, our regular uh, people that attend that. Uh, on a regular basis, and we would love to hear from you, uh, especially if you get touched by God, you uh, answer the sinner's prayer, you say uh, amen to that prayer with me, uh, with us, and we'd love to have that happen. So we appreciate all of you that are in person. 
and son, and most of you have been coming here every single night. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Last night we had a packed house. It was wonderful uh, to see. Uh, some people I had not seen in a long time. Uh, it's amazing when you have a revival and there's no first time visitors, but there's a lot of visitors to some people that are here because they've never seen them. Yeah. But I've seen them all. They've all been here before. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise God. And so it's great to have all of you here. It's great to be in the house of God. Uh, amen. One announcement, and that is that uh, this Sunday, this is the last night of revival, so get all you can. Don't let anything distract you. Turn off that phone unless you use it for scripture and get ready to hit that altar. Amen? Amen. Praise God. All right. So also one more announcement. It is Father's Day Sunday. Am I right? Yes. yes. All right. It is Father's Day Sunday. We've got a little something for dads. And so, uh, amen, come and, uh, and be a part of that. I will preach a message I promise you will never forget. Amen. amen? And, and, and listen, I'm, I'm nice and, 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 and really easy on moms on Mother's Day because I know what they go through. But Father's Day, we're going to lay it down. Amen? We're going to lay it down. Why? Because we have a greater, we have a greater responsibility. Yes. Amen. To be there for our families and to be the leaders, uh, uh, spiritual leaders in our home. And we're going to talk about that. So praise God for that. That's all the announcements we have. Give the Lord praise. Our ushers would come. We don't want to take an offering. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. Come on, we're taking an offering. Praise God. If you want to give online, you can go to our website at phohio. Dot com. PH is in Potter's House, Ohio.com. Both of those will take you there. Potter's House, Ohio.com, PHOhio.com. Uh, and the right top says online giving. You click on that. It'll take you through the process. If you've done any times, anytime you bought something online, if you've done that. Anytime you've per uh, previously purchased here, you've signed up, it'll take you literally four seconds. Uh, amen. And so, praise God, you can give that way. There's a, a box to check. Uh, amen for love offering and that's what we're talking about tonight tonight we're taking a love offering for our pastor that has been here uh, since Sunday morning Sunday night Monday Tuesday and tonight Wednesday and we are excited amen and in 2nd Kings chapter 4 I'm going to just be brief uh, it's a long story I'm not going to read it I'm just going to kind of I give you the, the Reader's Digest version or maybe the cliff notes as I used in college to be able to take tests on a book I never read. So um, we, uh, we have the Shunammite woman. We first are introduced to her because the prophet is coming to her area. Uh, and and she, just, she asked her husband, they're rich, they're well off. She asked her husband, hey, let's build a room. Let's build a nice room. Let's put a bed in there. Let's put a nice stove in there. Let's put an end table, a lamp where he can, he can read and study and, and get a hold of God and get a good rest. Every time the prophet comes into town, we want him to stay at this place. This will be his room. This will be his place. This will be his apartment. So he can stay there. And we can all be blessed. And how many times do you think the prophet wanted to go back there because he had a nice place to stay? Maybe that turned out to be his favorite place to go prophesy the word of God to teach what God is saying. And so uh, we know uh, we know that uh, the story plays out. Uh, he is so thankful that he tells her God's going to bless you with a son. And uh, she's blown away. She says, first, don't lie to me. Because I don't want to hear that if it's not going to happen. I can't handle it. So she's obviously been praying for this for so long. She was so disappointed that she stopped praying. And now it's a matter of contention with her. And she's thinking, don't, don't tell me if it's not going to happen. Because I can't handle another like that. That's the spirit I get from that statement. Right? And so then, of course, she has a baby. She has a baby, a son. Years go by. The son is a uh, 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 certain age, young boy. He gets a headache in the field. So he's out there with his dad. His dad tells him, go into your mom. So uh, he runs in, uh, kneels down at her knee, puts his head on her knee. My mom, my, my head hurts. My head hurts. And as his head is leaning on her knee, he dies. 
Moms, what would you do? The prophet gave you that prophecy. You had that son. You didn't ask again. You knew better than to ask again. You were disappointed for you, but you, you got that son, and now he's dead. I love what she does next. And this is where you come in. And I'm, I'm going to finish with this. There's much more to the story, but I'm going to finish with this. He picks up, she picks up her dead son and runs where? To the room she built for the prophet. Laid him down on the prophet's bed and then got what she needed from her husband to go and see the prophet. But I love this. Listen. When tragedy came, she laid the tragedy on the back of her investment for God. What she had paid, what they had given, what they had been honest and faithful in giving to the prophet, to the man of God, to the church, you could, it, it, it translates to the church of Jesus Christ. She laid her tragedy, her struggle, her hard times, things that didn't go the way she thought, she laid them on her investment, knowing that that investment carried the weight to heal that child. This investment in the man of God will bring you to a point where it can literally cover you in times of trial, tribulation, and tragedy. Amen. And your investment buys into the kingdom of God. You become a member of God's economy, not the world's economy. How many know that's messed up? You want to trust Joe Biden with your money? Or do you want to trust God with your money? We give and we invest because that investment means something and it bears fruit. And I love she took the child and laid him on top of her investment and said, hold on, let me go talk to the prophet. This is not over yet. Amen. Let's give as the Lord will lead us to give. Everything we give tonight is going to go to Pastor Robinson. Everything that we do uh, tonight is going to uh, go to help bless him. He is the very meaning of the word evangelist. He doesn't have a church. Uh, he doesn't have a church that pays him. He doesn't have a church that blesses him or that covers his household or anything. He, everything he has, he makes on the road preaching the gospel to churches all over the world. That's what he does. He's an itinerant evangelist that goes from place to place to place and trusts God solely and completely for his living. And that's why we, the church in New Philadelphia, will not disappoint and we will give. Come on, somebody. And we will give. And we will be honest with our giving. And we will be generous because that's what we do. Because one day we might need to ride something on this investment. We'll be able to say, you know what? God, I remember. I invested more than I thought I could afford for this pastor's blessing. And now I'm asking you to help. Let's give as the Lord would lead us. Um, I'll attempt Brother Josiah. Bless you all. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you. Praise the Lord. Give online, phohio.com.
here tonight, so we can't appreciate him. So he is working. Amen. Glory to God. Excited to be in the house of the Lord. I'm excited for this final night. Uh, I don't know what the question is. Uh, you wouldn't tell me, but he gave me that look, and I know that look well. And he said, oh, tonight, the question. The question tonight. So he's, uh, he's getting me hungry. Uh, and then he told me the question he's going to start out next year's revival with. Uh, amen. And that didn't help me either. So we're believing God. Hallelujah. It's been all over the world preaching the word of God. Again, one of my very, very good friends for, uh, I don't know how many years, 20 some years. And we're excited to have him in the house of God. Let's give a new Philadelphia welcome as Pastor John Robinson comes. Amen. Amen. Praise God, amen. He's been a very good friend. And uh, hallelujah. We've been through some things together, thank God. Amen. Don't tell and uh, and uh, you, you know what is really good about relationships? Uh, actually, really, the only way you can have a relationship is that you, there's a, re a reciprocation. There is. Um, if it's a one way relationship, then. It's not really a relationship, is it? It's a monologue. Come on. Come on. And uh, uh, this is the great thing about, about having a relationship with God. When you get saved, there is a relationship that you and I, amen, need to reciprocate. The Bible says that, that the love of God constrains us. That we reckon that he died, one died for all, that all are dead. Therefore, they that live should live for him that died for them. That this is, this is normal kingdom thinking. That if Jesus died for us, the least we can do is die to ourselves and live for him. Amen. This is why Paul says, amen, uh, you know what, I, I no longer live. I, I don't live, amen, I, I'm dead, amen, to myself, but I, I live, amen, by the faith of Jesus Christ. That the beauty of the real, the reality of salvation is I don't care how many times you prayed at a, uh, you, you know, at an altar and said, Jesus, come in my heart. The relationship is, is, is reciprocal, right? Amen. And that's the glory of it. And that's what I found. I found when I walked into church, I, had, I didn't want to have anything to do with religion. And when I got saved, I realized that Jesus was real, that God could have a relationship with me, that I could actually talk with Him, you know. And, and I, He could be a part of my life. That those voices inside, amen, were, weren't all demonic, amen. <laughs> now I had a voice inside, amen, that led me, amen, to do things that were right. Amen. Isaiah chapter 6, I've been, uh, you've been enduring my, my obsession with the questions that God asked men, and I, I find that when God, uh, amen, has a dialogue with man, and he asks the questions, he will bring you to some of the most thrilling stories of the Bible. Yes. I mean, Moses at the burning bush, he's making all kinds of excuses. And God asks him, what do you have in your hand, dummy? <laughs> oh, a stick. We'll throw it down. Bada boom. You see these miracles happening. His yes. staff turns out to be one of the greatest articles, amen, in the, the, uh, yes. the, the, the tabernacle. You, you find a woman, this little girl that's been plagued by these uh, uh, Christians that are totally unbelieving. Uh, Abraham, uh, uh, you know, he's, he's striving for a boy, he's striving for a, a family, and Sarah's barren, and so they're frustrated. They're not, gonna, they're, they're, they're not uh, you know, they, they get so frustrated, they can't wait, they can't uh, uh, just believe God, so they, they concoct this incredible, uh, you, you know, Forgery, amen, and throw this little girl in the middle of their stupidity. Remember that? Yes. She has a child for Abraham. And it was such a such a horrible situation. They kicked her out. Abraham sent her out. And you know, you know what God did? God asked her, Where have you been? 
Where are you going? Come on. Because he hadn't forsaken her. No. He wasn't going to play games with her. No. God, this is where you and I see that uh, God, amen. And this is a question that brings me to one of the most incredible stories in the whole Bible. Isaiah chapter 6. The Bible says, In the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on the throne high and lifted up, yes. and the train of His robe filled the temple. Now above it stood seraphim, each one had six wings, and two he covered his face, and two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one cried to the other and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is filled with His glory. And the posts of the door were shaken by the voice of him who cried out, and the house was filled with smoke. So I said, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I'm a man of unclean lips, and I, I, and I dwell in the midst of a people with unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having his hand in a live coal which he had taken from uh, the tongs from the altar, and he touched my mouth with it, and he said, Behold... This has touched your lips, your iniquity is taken away, and your sins are purged. What a story. Amen. Here you and I see, amen, that God begins to visit a man. And you know, God does that. That's what revivals, we're praying for God, amen, yeah. to visit you and I, amen, in your little cubicle. Amen. amen. One of the things that I've always thought was odd was a woman that was thrown in front of Jesus. And the Bible says they took, they took her to the temple and they threw her before Jesus and they began to ask Jesus, what are you going to do with this one, huh? And they're trying to trap him and he begins to write something in the sand and they all, they all go away, right? And the Bible says he was left alone with her in the midst of them. He was left alone with her where? In the midst of them. That you can be in the midst of a crowd, you can be in the midst of a thousand people, but God has an ability, amen, to, 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 to visit you right where you are. And He can be alone with you tonight. That's, that's our prayer that God, amen, would isolate you and that you and Him, amen, would deal with some things. That's what preaching is all about. Isaiah, amen, the Bible says that in the context, amen, of this scripture, you and I see that this was a specific time that Isaiah is identifying out of history. This was a time, amen, and when he said it, it, it was the year that King Uzziah died, that would spark, amen, the memory of every Jew. It would spark the, it would spark emotions in everybody in that society. It was like saying, uh, uh, ten years from now, in the year 2020, you and I will know exactly what they're saying. Mm -hmm. In 2011, amen. Uh, this is what uh, in the year 2011, you and I know exactly what they were talking about. 1964, amen, you and I would know exactly, amen, uh, uh, what was going on. You and I, know we have certain dates, uh, certain cues, amen, times, amen, when we realize certain that there was a shift. Come on. 911. You say 911, amen, and, and you know, your mind it shifts exactly. You remember where you were when this incident happened. And, and uh, in other words, amen, uh, Isaiah was saying this was a certain time. This was a time in history that is that, that changed the society, that changed uh, the, the landscape of our lives. Amen. King Uzziah, 2 Chronicles. 26 tells us that Uzziah was known worldwide as a king who brought peace and prosperity. He was an inventor and a builder. He built up his army to be a powerful force. He was a man who walked with God and strengthened by God. Therefore, amen, you find, amen, that here he is. Here's a man who was 
brought his nation, amen, to prosperity, world domination. He was implementing, amen, uh, uh, progress, amen, his, uh, his reign, uh, uh, amen, uh, was a time of prosperity and blessing. And what yes. happened was a people, amen, we responded, amen, to this uh, leader. And uh, uh, we were, I mean, things were doing well. We were, we, were, we were content. We were being blessed, amen. Amen, as the tide rolls, amen, uh, it lifted all the ships, you know what I mean? And this is, you you begin to realize, amen, this is a, this is a time uh, when you say that when King Uzziah died, amen, it struck, amen, this leader, and he was no longer there. And the implications, the implications uh, that he's no longer in that office, he's no longer, amen, at the helm making decisions, uh, amen, there is this, uh, uh, the, the successor, amen, was a lesser person, uh, and many times you find in the Bible that, like the books of Judges, every time a good man uh, dies, uh, he's replaced with an idolatrous, uh, selfish, uh, amen, a uh, uh, horrible, un ungodly man, and the nation crashes down. That's what the book of Judges is all about. Yes. That we have a tendency, amen, uh, after a great run, amen, to, 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 to run our society right, right nosedive right come into Come on, that. come on. I think this is important. Because you and I know what it feels like to wonder, amen, what tomorrow is going to be like, yes. amen, uh, uh, that we're, we have, we're, we're, we're in a situation similar to Isaiah, amen, uh, where we've, uh, we're having to leave, amen, a time of stability, a time of confidence, uh, and we're going into a time of uncertainty, and you know what, with this whole uh, uh, pandemic, amen, and all the things, it, it makes real, it makes real, amen, uh, uh, the end times, and Jesus said, when you see these things, uh, when you see these pandemics, Pandemics, when you see it, amen, nation rising against nation, uh, wars and rumors of wars, uh, racial tension, uh, rioting in the street, he said, uh, amen, uh, be, beware because this is the beginning of sorrows. Amen. I don't know if this is the fulfillment of that prophecy. I'm sure that there are many generations who thought that they lived in the very end of the end. Amen. But we are anticipating amen, the coming of Jesus. Yes. And you know what? There is, uh, amen, lining up, amen, uh, Israel uh, being attacked, uh, amen, the, 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 the sanctions and everything being lifted, uh, the negotiations with uh, nuclear armaments, amen, to Russia and to Iran. And you begin to read the news and you thinking, man, this is lining up, amen, like uh, it's, it's getting ready, amen, for I, Isaiah, you know, uh, what is it, Isaiah 38, uh, and you begin to really realize, amen, all this is coming to pass, if you're, if you're awake at all, if you're thinking at all, you begin to realize, man, this is a, this is a time, and this is, this is a time that King Uzziah died, yes, and Isaiah, amen, uh, he makes note of this. He wants you and I to know it was at this time, amen, hallelujah, I saw the Lord. I believe tonight, amen, that in the worst of times, in the most, uh, amen, uncertain of times, yes, come on. amen, the come church on. Uh, is going to be visited by God. This is what I see in revivals uh, uh, as of late since the beginning uh, of the year. And the evangelists that I've talked to, amen, there's a, there's a, 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 a special, amen, presence of God. The altars uh, are anointed. That God is visiting His people. In other words, He's duplicating. He's, he's doing this again for us uh, in the time of uncertainty, in a time uh, you do mark, mark it down. Amen. That our, our society will never be the same. This is a shift. This is a monumental, historic amen. shift. Uh, amen. You and I, amen. If Jesus tarries another 50 years, we're going to look back uh, and we're going to say, you know what? Uh, this, this marks a shifting of our society. Yes. Everything changed because yes. of this. Yes. I don't care if it was man made or whether. I don't care about the details. You and I understand uh, that there is, amen, a, a monumental shift in our society and it's going to affect everyone in our 
society, whether they are conscious of it or not. I saw the Lord. And I believe, amen, God, God's going to visit His church. I think God is visiting His church. Yeah. I think yeah. God, amen, is beginning to bring us into this place, amen, that Isaiah begins to see when everything's stripped away, amen. And you know what? Uh, we haven't come into a time where, where they're throwing pastors into jail or, or where they're to make, taking away our rights to assemble, amen. They, they tried that, amen. <laughs> and so we're, we're not at that place yet, but I'll tell you something. Uh, it, it, I'm not uh, prophesying that, but I will tell you, amen, that it would not surprise me that some of these pressures uh, will begin to affect the church, uh, uh, taking off our men and women off the bathrooms, uh, amen, and di different things we have to allow that the church is going to be a target, amen, and, and the people of God, as history will tell you, that the people of God were always blamed, amen, for the division and the, 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 the yes. rebellion of that nation. Nero, Nero, Nero burned his whole city down, amen, uh, uh, flamed amen. by the bodies of Christians, uh, he hated Christianity, and he, and he attacked them for no real reason. Amen. You see it in Germany. You see it, amen, uh, during uh, uh, the time of, uh, uh, of the, the English, uh, the Inquisitions and the Dark Ages. Uh, you begin to realize, amen, uh, when the world is finally has no one else. Uh, they, 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 they're, they're the only one to blame is themselves. Uh, they will look to the, the righteous. They will look to the remnant. They will look to the troublemaker. It amazes me, I was watching this CNN, and, and these people want to identify Trump, Trump people. They want to identify them and mark them, because they want to say, this, these are the people that causes trouble. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> and this is part of the delusion Pastor mentions a lot. Yes. So... The purpose, the purpose, and this is this is so crucial. The purpose of this question is clear. Because when 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 the Isaiah says, Amen, he, he says, uh, listen to this, Amen. Isaiah, he's uh, he's in the temple, Amen. There's this incredible, uh, you, you know, this the presence of God. He he's there. The, the glory of God has filled the train of his, his robe has filled the smoke, uh, and there's these beings, these uh, angelic beings, and they're they're speaking out and they're saying, "Holy!" and the whole place is uh, shaking. Amen. This was a, you can't, I don't know if you can imagine, amen, what it was like there. Amen. The smoke in there. And hear me, uh, you know, what would you, what would your response be if God and all of his glory would fill this place uh, and you could feel oh, the presence of God, you and I, you yes. and I would have the same, we would have the same response uh, to God that Isaiah did. Yes. I, I'm, a, I'm an unclean man. Come on, come on. Come on. I am the insufficient. I, it's like Peter when Jesus uh, catches all those fish. He says, uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a sinner. And I am a sinner. Yes. Because he has this, this, uh, this confrontation with the divine. With purity. With yes. truth. Yes. With righteousness. Come on. Yes. Yes. And the, the, the whole place is shaking by the voices of these seraphims. Uh, and he's saying, I'm unclean. Uh, and I'm unrighteous. Uh, and I, I, I don't like this. Man, this is, uh, oh God, help me. I'm insufficient. Uh, and one of the seraphims touches his lips. Uh, and he says, uh, you're forgiven. Come on. And he says, you have, your sins have been purged. Like Psalms 55, you know, I mean, David cries out, and, amen, cleanse me, amen, purge me clean. John 1, amen, says, uh, uh, 1 and 9, it, it says, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to, to, to cleanse you from all your unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. Here, here's a picture of God getting one of his children into a position where he could actually ask him a question. That's right. All this 
shaking. I mean, here you are. I mean, God has just purged your sins. You can walk out of this place absolutely clean. And this is what we wow. tell people. You can be forgiven of yeah. all of your sins. Yes. Not the stuff we know about. All the stuff. He can clean out the cobwebs. He can take the bones out of those closets. He can, he can cleanse your mind like that demoniac. He man clothe you and put you in your right mind in a moment's time. Yeah, yeah. Can, can, can you put yourself there just for a moment? Put yourself in that temple. There's, the, the, the place is filled with smoke. Amen. Uh, the, the, I mean, the power of uh, uh, the worship. Uh, holy, holy, holy. And the voices uh, are trembling. And here you are. You realize, oh God, I'm, and, you, and God forgives you of all your sins. You are tenderized. At this point... If, if you have any conscience, if you have any, if there's any reality, if there's any truth in you, amen, at this point right there, Isaiah would have done anything. I mean, he, here he is, man. He's seeing the glory of God. He's seeing the, uh, the, 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 the Shekinah glory. That Here he is. He's feeling the tremble, amen. And he, he, he knows he's not worthy. You know, and God says, you know what? You are worthy. Because I made you worthy. And then God asked him the question. Who will go for us? Who will we send? Yes. You know what's interesting to me? When God gets people to that point where they're totally defenseless, totally honest with God, Yes. Totally willing to say, God, God, thank you for forgiving me. Thank you, oh God. What can I do? How can I reciprocate? How can I love you back? And the only thing God on God's mind is evangelism. <laughs> Come on. People. The world. Who will go? He wasn't talking to, to just the prophet. He wasn't, he does, you know, Peter, he's in the boat. He says, I'm, in, I'm unclean. I'm unrighteous. Jesus says, I'll make you fishers of men. You no longer fish men. And the issue on his mind wasn't, okay, well, let's go, uh, uh, let's go get you some Bible school. Let's go get you some prayer uh, lessons. Let's go get you some uh, uh, three-point sermons. Uh, no, he says, uh, I want you to win men. Come on. I want you to win men. When God gets a man or a woman in a place of vulnerability where he realizes the, the cost that Jesus paid for his soul. Amen. That doesn't happen often. That's, that's why we preach and we, we build this up because you need to feel. You need to feel the forgiveness. Of, amen. You need to feel the love of God that sent uh, our Savior to the cross for you. It was your sin. It was my sin that put Him on the cross. Amen. And when we realize that, when, we, when we're in God's presence, amen, especially in a time that we live, uh, in a time of uncertainty, in a time of tribulation, a, a time of wars and rumors of wars and pestilence and Famine and all, oh my God, this stuff, uh, amen, God says, okay, here I am in the worst of times. God comes to a man and says, can I, can I ask you a question? <laughs> Come on. Come on. Come on. And, it, and it's almost like directed towards him, but not really him. Who can I send? Oh, come on. <laughs> come on, I ask you, in the light of God's blood that was shed on the cross, you know when you and I, what, 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 what can Isaiah say? What only, what appropriate answer can you and I actually say? Is there anything that we can say? Well, oh, you know, you gotta move along. Oh, God, you gotta put him on the You know, in, in light of his, and when God gets you to this place, there are, there is nothing more. 
Come on. God says, who can I send? What did he say? Send me. Send me. Come I'll on. I'll go. Come on. Send me. Yes. Amen. God opened up this opportunity for you. And where God, when he hammers us, when he finally gets you to a place where you realize the cost that Jesus died for us, I'm telling you, man, the only thing in his mind is who? It's not about you anymore. It's about the world, it's about your neighbors, it's about this city, it's about this nation, it's about righteousness, it's about my son dying, not only for you, but will you, who am I going to send? It wasn't even, he didn't even ask him directly, will you go, who will you? <laughs> who will go? You know, this is, these are the words of a, of, of a leader who has asked everybody ten times. Oh, come on. He's, he's, he's gone around. The Bible says he, he seeks it. Amen. Eyes to and fro all across. The, amen. Looking. Seeking. Searching for men whose eyes are directed towards him. Who, who has a heart. Say, okay, I realize what you've done. for. What has Jesus done for you? And you, you can say no. Mm, come on. How dare you? How dare us? Pastor, how did you do it? How did you how did you go to Africa? How did you do it twice? How did you sell water? How, how did you uh, you know what? It's very easy. Hey man, God was looking. God said, Who will I send? Yes. Amen. And, and I went to an altar and said, God, send me. Amen. I love Pastor Mitchell. In January he opened up with a sermon. First time we're in the building, unmasked. It's filled. People came out. We filled that place up January. First sermon he preaches. He makes these statements. He says, you know what? Since my father died, we made a decision. We're going we're gonna to keep the main thing, the main thing. Come on. And he said, we're going to plant churches in the middle of COVID. We're going to send people out. We're going to send missionaries around the world. We're going to continue. And this year, more churches have been planted in our fellowship. Amen. It's a record numbers. Amen. Because he stood up and he said, you know why? Because God, amen, this is what we do. This is who we are. And when we stop doing God's will, when we stop evangelizing and making disciples and, and planting churches, God is going to leave and he's going to get someone else and they are going to do the will of God and we will be destroyed. Come on. Give us a watchword for the hour. A thrilling word, a word of power, a battle cry, a flaming breath that, that calls to conquest or to death. A word to rouse the church from rest to heed our master's high behest, to the call is given, you host arise, our watchword is evangelize. Be glad, evangel now proclaim through all the earth in Jesus' name. This word is ringing through the skies, evangelize, evangelize to dying men of falling race. Make known the gift of the gospel grace, the word that now is in darkness lies. Evangelize, evangelize. I want to move to the revelation of this question because there's more to this. Will you go? Will you go across the seas or across the street or to the mall or on the corner with a bullhorn? This is interesting. In Isaiah 6, 9, it says, He says, Here am I, I will go. And He says, Then go and tell this people Hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and come, be converted, and be healed. Now that's a twist. Who, who will go for me? Who, who will I send? I'll, I'll go, I'll go. Then go to them and preach to them that do not want to hear you and will slam the door in your face and will flip you off and will turn you into the government and will, 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 will on every turn, amen, resist you. Make their hearts fat. Amen. That, that uh, saying 
it means to give them no excuse. Amen. Uh, preach the gospel to them. Amen. Uh, make their hearts fat. Uh, bring them knowledge. Uh, and then that will bring accountability. And he says, you know what? Uh, their ears are going to be closed. Uh, and their eyes are going to be blind. Uh, and But he says, I want you to preach. Uh, I want you to go. You know why? Because the results are not your problem. It's not your ministry. Amen. Revival is not your responsibility yep. as far as people. You're not the Lord of the harvest. Because what you and I see here is this relationship with God that is reciprocal. When we love us, amen, we love Him. And let me tell you something I learned from the day I got saved. Evangelism means dominion in your life. You, you, you're going through temptation? Go, go tell someone about Jesus. You, you, you're confused? I'm telling you, man, begin to witness. Tell people about the love of Jesus Christ. And I've always told people in my churches, if you cannot verbalize your testimony, you cannot express verbally what Jesus Christ has done in your life, you will forget it and you will leave. Amen. Because you and I need to verbalize. I'm telling you something. God, amen. Evangelism is, is His heart. Amen. Telling other people about the love of Christ. That's where we draw strength. That's the well. Amen. Yeah. He said, I have meat that you have no idea where. You don't have meat that you have no idea what it is. Amen. Because he's evangelizing this woman in John chapter 4. And the disciples are like, where, where, who's fed you? I, I'll tell you what, man. I have this meat. I have strength because I've evangelized. Not a woman, but I've evangelized a city. Come on. <laughs> you are you tempted? Are you tried? Are you trying to get over, amen, an addiction? Do you have secret sin that no one knows about, amen? How are you going to overcome it? I'll tell you what, become an evangel. Become an evangelist. Become, amen, someone who goes out. And I'll tell you something, God will give you power. Because when you're in the, when you're in the public arena and you're declaring God in the secret, God will give you strength. When you represent Him, He will represent you. When Jesus uh, uh, sent out 70 out uh, among the, uh, these different cities, He sent out all His disciples. The Bible says He went uh, and as they were going and doing His will, as they were going casting out demons uh, and praying for the sick uh, and preaching the gospel, amen, uh, Jesus went to their villages and preached the gospel to their friends. To their families. Yes. Amen. In other words, God, amen. This is how we're going to get our families, our, our nation saved because, amen, this is our responsibility. But the issue is, amen, are you willing? Pastor, it's so hard. It's so hard to outreach. They don't want to listen. So Isaiah said the only logical thing that he could say, verse 11. Then he said, How long? How long do I have to do this? And listen to what he said in verse number 11. He, and he asked me, he said, Until the cities are laid waste and without inhabitants and the houses are without a man, the land is utterly desolate and the Lord will remove men far away and the forsaken places are many in the midst of the land. Preach until it doesn't work. <laughs> Come on. Preach until there are no more men. There are no more women. There are no more sinners. Preach until the land is desolate. Preach until, amen, there is no end. I realized as a missionary, amen, that my job was to, to be a missionary. To be this a 24-hour outreach. I am there in that country to win souls, to win souls, to win souls, to make disciples, to make disciples, uh, to, to work myself out of a job, amen, to give a national my church uh, that will go and preach uh, and raise up disciples uh, and send men out that will go and to reach disciples uh, and will send men out. This is, the, this is exactly what we do. This is exactly what Isaiah was being challenged about. Uh, and you know, tonight God will have to bring us love. He will have to bring us love, amen, until he says, uh, amen, who, who will go? 
in the face of this opposition, in the face of this administration, in the face of this government, in the face of the end times, who will I send? Isaiah chapter 6, verse 13 says, But yet it shall be a tent, and it shall return, and shall be eaten as a teal tree, and the oak whose substance is in them when they cast their leaves. So the holy seed shall be in the substance thereof. Nebuchadnezzar carried the Jews captive into Babylon. One tenth were left. That's a, this scripture is a poetic, amen, way of saying, you preach the gospel, you be faithful, you go and you preach. It doesn't matter how many doors, how many, how many fingers, uh, amen, are, are thrown at you, how many times you've been rejected. Go, and I'll tell you something, let me tell you something, God's will will be done. A tenth. In other words, God, amen, will draw out what is His. That's what the tenth is, amen. It is His. It is, it is the first fruits. And God says, amen, this, and this prophecy was fulfilled to show us, amen, that when a man, amen, will go in and face that kind of uncertainty, amen, with the gospel. This is what we're supposed to do. Amen. amen. And when you do that, amen, this is the answer. This is where power lies, friend. This is where power lies for your sin, for your undiscipline, for your, your misunderstanding. You don't know the scriptures. I'll tell you, you start witnessing, and I'll tell you what the Bible begin to make, make it'll make real to you, man. It'll come popping at you, man. You'll preach the scriptures that you didn't even know existed. Then find them later. <laughs> oh strange. <laughs> I I said that one time, amen, because the Holy Ghost. What was what was Jesus' last commandment? It wasn't go, was it? It was stay. <laughs> and you know, where, you know where they wanted? You know where he wanted them to stay? In Jerusalem. The one place on earth they didn't want to stay. Where Jesus was just crucified, the Jews were haters, the government wanted to find him. Amen. They were still trying to uh, pin the Jesus uh, uh, body, amen, on him, all, all kinds of stuff. They were afraid. And you see that they were behind locked doors all the time. They were hiding. Uh, they were underground. Uh, they weren't telling anybody where, because Jesus said, I don't want you to go. I want you to stay until you are undue with power of yeah. on high. And the Holy Ghost, uh, amen, uh -huh. he fills you. The Bible says in Acts 1, uh, and ain't, uh, amen, that you're filled with the Holy Ghost. Why? So He will give you power to be my martyrs. Yeah. To be my witnesses. Yep. <laughs> Come on. You know, the word, that word witness, amen, martyrs, martyr, amen, is not that you will actually die in the service of what you believe, but you're willing to. Yes. This is what the Scripture is all about. We're having a societal, monumental, historic shift in our society. And right now, this is what's important. You're willing. You're willing to do what God's on, what's on God's heart. It amazes me. This whole thing, I just I, I, it's like a, a movie in my mind. It's like shaking. And I can imagine I'm sitting, I would be sitting there trembling. Knowing, oh God, I know exactly who I am. And God says, okay, well, I, what, what, can you say no? I want you to bow your head tonight. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. The time to give your heart to Jesus. The Bible says it's now. Yes. Today's the day of salvation. Now is the proper, acceptable, reasonable time for you. Let me lay this out. Jesus came from heaven to earth, was born among the impoverished Jewish people, was raised in a violent, amen, merciless generation, he lived his whole life without sin. 
And it was a falsely accused, right? And he, he laid bare, amen, himself on the cross of that cross, that Roman cross, with because of our sins. And at any point he could have come off of that cross, at any point he could have called down 10,000 angels. But he said, no man puts me on the cross, I freely go. He gave his life for your sin and your bondage. And tonight the first thing you need to hear, amen, is that he's here to forgive you. I know the condemnation that comes at night. I know the loneliness that is almost unbearable. I, I know the, the failures that is there. But you know what tonight God says? I can forgive you of all your sins. Not only that, well, I'll not only forgive you of your acts, but I'll purge your soul clean. This is what God does. This is what's so glorious. And this is why this is why those of us that are saved, amen, we're, we're willing to do, we're willing to go, we're willing to pay because we owe. And tonight you're here. You want to be forgiven. You want to be set free. You want to say, yes, God. You're here. You lift your hand. Say, you know what? I, I know I need Jesus Christ. I know I need the Son of God. You're you're not right with God, but you want to be. Amen. God is dealing with your heart. I want you simply to lift your hand just so that I can acknowledge you. Just to know, amen, thank you for that. That anybody else tonight, amen, God is dealing with your heart. In the light of God's sacrifice, I if, if there was a way to, to show it to you in, on a video screen, you, you would weep, you would fall to your you would fall to your knees and say, God help me, God forgive me. How can you say no to that? You're here tonight. Anybody else, you're backslidden, you're not right with God, but you want to be born again. Amen. There's one brother that lifted his hand. Did you, you mean that? Amen. Let's stand. Amen. Oh, I wonder tonight, you, as you come, would you come to the front? I'm going to ask, amen. Pastor's going to get someone to pray for you, or Alex is going to pray for you. You're on the line.